you're building the iPhone of the car industry. Is that what I heard? You're saying you're calling for entrepreneurs and developers here to build applications on a car? Well, uh, you know, I, I hope we will. I hope we will. Uh, I hope the price of a car will not go as low as the price of an iPhone. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I, I still think that we, we as, uh, as an industry, uh, we, we, we're going to need a lot of innovation. Uh, you know, again, and this is coming from the signal that, when, you know, when I was young, uh, the car was the number one object, was the number one object you wanted to buy. Uh, when I look at the statistics in Japan, was is the number 17 object, I'm challenged. Talk to me about Japan. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Did you, did no, you? no, please go ahead. Um, I heard when you walk in a restaurant there, people stop speaking. That you, are, you, you achieved God status. That you have a manga no, no, on look, your name, right? Look, uh, you know, obviously in Japan, people detect me because I'm not Japanese, so it, it, it shows. <laughs> uh, and second, I'm the only CEO. I'm with Howard Stringer, the head of Sony, the only uh, foreigner CEO in Japan. So you have just two people to remember. So he's known, I'm known. So. Uh, uh, as you know, the tra Nissan, uh, Nissan, the car industry in Japan is a very, very uh, high-level industry because it's so much at the base of the Japanese system. It's, uh, it creates a lot of value, it's a lot of exports, a lot of employment, you have a lot of suppliers. So uh, it's normal. That means you're some, some kind of a funny guy, you're a black sheep in, uh, you know, in, in, in a country which is extremely homogeneous. So, uh, and, and in a certain way, people get used to you. You know, you're not Japanese, but you're part of Japan in a certain way. You know? and, yeah, and we have it's, a few Japanese in the room. Raise your hand. Like, yeah, you have Fumi, I see here. We have Evernote, Phil Liblin, who is like yeah. a lot of startups. What, do, you, what do, you have a, do you have advice for startups who want to get into Japan? Like, uh, or, you know, like, Stories, I, I know you, 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 you said that you shouldn't walk into a, an elevator uh, after a woman, like in France, very important stuff, right? I'll tell you about but the culture. You can, oh, tell yeah. me about this story. No, that means... Like that cultural, very important cultural look, differences. We're living in a world where the same, the same behavior doesn't mean the same thing. I mean, I, given the example of the elevator in Japan, obviously in Japan you know very well that politeness and correctness is man goes first, woman goes after, okay? So when you're a Westerner and you've been educated from the beginning that you shouldn't move first, you should say the lady goes first and then you move after. When you arrive to Japan, and I, I was nominated as CEO of Nissan and I went to the office. You know, every time I had to take the elevator, uh, you know, I was sitting in front of the elevator, there were uh, female employees and I was waiting for them to go to the elevator and they were waiting for me to go to the elevator. <laughs> so the door opened, nobody got in. Everybody was embarrassed. It goes down, the elevator went. Next time, I, you know, I just invited people to go to the elevator and say, no, no, please, you go ahead. And, you know, at a certain point in time, somebody came to me and they said, you know what, you're in Japan. You have to forget your preconceived idea about what correctness is. Being correct in Japan is you move first, lady comes after. It's not better or worse than your convention, which is ladies goes first and you go after. You're just gonna have to adapt to it. And it's very true about this world in which we're living, where we have constantly to cross borders, but the, a word doesn't mean the same thing, whatever you're in Japan, in China, or the United States. Uh, correct behavior is not the same, whatever you are in one country or the other. And we're gonna have to gain flexibility even in terms of management, in terms of business. So that's what you're doing? Exactly. Because your there is not one correct way to do things. That's what you need to learn. And what is correct in one country is completely different in another. I took the example of the elevator because it was striking for me. But even you can talk about management, you can talk about business, you can talk about a lot of things. And we're going to have, as entrepreneurs, to learn about how to be agile into moving from one country to the other, you're going to have to switch what are your priorities, and, what's correct or and not. And this crowd, we have 60 countries here, by the way, yes, so talk to me about diversity. And yeah. we're working on getting more people from Asia. Well, you should help us get more people from Asia. Yeah. But um, in terms of, uh, of, of agile entrepreneurship, which yeah. is your point, and I'm very impressed because you're, we're talking about agile entrepreneurship with like 50 employees. You have, what, 400,000, you said? We have 350,000 employees between Renault and Nissan. These are direct employees, obviously, without counting the people who are working for you who are not your employees. That means suppliers who are at your plants or near your plants or engineers who are working in your technical center but are not your employees. And if you start to count all the people working for you, uh, 
uh, we have about, uh, about 2 million. 2 million with all the ecosystem yes. around yes. it. We, I have a video about uh, being agile uh, in the car industry. I don't know if we can start, uh, start this video. But it's, uh, it's all about um, how you can adapt the car to having applications in, in the car. So let's see if we, uh, if we, can, uh, if we can see uh, that video. Let it run a little bit. So, so this is the volume knob. It's by JL Audio. And uh, this is just really easy to use, removable. You just slide it out, take it out. When you want to put it back in, just slide it on in. The dock connector is built into the pod here. And that's it. OK. So. <laughs> All right, we're good with the video. So here's, here's the point. Here is the point is that we kind of like hack it. You know, we want to hack the cars because you get a little frustrated because of course you design them, what, five, six years in advance. And we design like two weeks in advance apps or maybe a few months, of course, but we are very, you know, changing things. And so that's a solution they, they found on these cars. They remove the entire, what, how, what's your view? How can we look? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very sensitive to this and frankly, uh, uh, very conscious on the fact that we need to really limit ourselves to organize the platform and th everything which is core to our business and leave the consumer do whatever he wants with the car. We have a tendency to define everything and decide everything. And this is not anymore the future. For example, obviously, consumer doesn't care about the engine. He doesn't care about the transmission. He doesn't care about the safety system. That means he doesn't care about the brakes. But whenever we come to the application, he want to make his own choice. And we did not find yet the openness to say, OK, I'm going to offer you the platform and the basic functionality, and you're going to choose what kind of application you want and what kind of device you want. That's even, that's even why I probably will. I don't know if you agree with this, Carlos. But the reason why people choose their phone today, and they, they have a choice, you know, from iPhone to Android, Windows Phone 7, Nokia, Blackberry, you know, so many options, is the apps. Is, how, is, is my cool, like, is my running app in the phone? Is, yes. my, is Netflix on the car to watch movies? Or is last minute to, this, you know, have audio in it? And I want yeah. my app. So yeah. I think you can make a really huge difference by... Yeah. yeah. Look, the iPhone is never an object of a safety. Never. I mean, iPhone, it doesn't work, you have parasite, it stops, it's whatever, it's okay. It's not safety. In a car, you have a lot of safety consideration, mm. which, which oblige you to be extremely, extremely attentive. I can tell you an example. example. In the United States, the Secretary of Transportation, Ray LaHood, I had many meetings with him. He always was telling me, I just, uh, my, my priority is distraction for drivers. I don't want you guys to put in the car anything that distracts the driver, it's a safety issue. Okay, so we have to be careful about, you know, what kind of application you allow the drivers because the last thing you want is a kind of uh, a, a collective problem, uh, somebody having an accident because he was playing with something that you allowed him to do uh, because you have safety issues. Um, uh, interference between devices, electronic devices that yeah. you're bringing from outside the car with the safety devices that you're putting into the car can create a problem. Yeah, like my grandmother. Uh, that means that mean because you have a lot of electronics in the car. So we're going to have to be very that. careful. We'll have to be very careful. The big difference between the telephone, the iPhone, and the car is iPhone, there is no safety issue. I mean, if the iPhone doesn't work or if you have something, it's okay. I mean, you're not happy. Radiation? Yeah, you, maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, the car, <laughs> you have a lot of liability, you have a lot of yeah. responsibility. That's what blocks a little bit the evolution. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to ignore it, but you're going to have to overcome it. That's what I see as the main obstacle to that. How about this? If we, you know, worked with you, with, you know, like, because those are a lot of developers, applications. And how about this? If we worked with you to see what are the security criteria, yeah. you know, Renault could, could, could say, we want apps, but we only want certain category of apps, and we'll work with you uh, together. Well, frankly, I would love it. I think that the electric car is a great opportunity to transform the way, you know, people conceive cars. And, you know, having, having people buying electric car, not only because it's zero emission, not only because it's a great car, there is, 
you know, um, a great driving experience, no noise, no vibration, nothing at all, but also allows you a lot of application which are compatible with the good safety. I, I, I would love it. I mean, I, I, would, uh, I would say that this is going to be a great opportunity to innovate. This is a great opportunity to add value and do it in a way where we can bring the car to the market. You know, your entrepreneurs can bring some application or some ideas in order to make the car even more, even more attractive. And you were saying for, for, for our friends here, it's a huge opportunity in terms of revenue because there is a new market which is completely opening, which Look, doesn't exist. We are, a, again, a $2 trillion industry. I mean, and this industry is, op is opening up because this industry is facing two problems, as I said. You know, we used to be the top choice for many consumer, a car was number one, number two, or number three. In mature market, it's not anymore. In developing market, it's still, it's still very high. Uh, but in mature market, it's going down, which means we have to reinvent the car in order to bring it back at the forefront of objects which are that people desire. And we have this opportunity because everybody wants autonomous transportation. Autonomous transportation. Now, they don't want it on detriment of the environment. They don't want it on detriment of flexibility. They don't want it on, on detriment of connectivity. They don't want this. Okay? So if we can reestablish this by saying, no, you're driving a car, it's neutral to the environment. You're driving a car, you're connected. You can have all your application. You don't have to stop being connected yeah. because you're driving. If the we can, maps update. Exactly. And if we can do that, we're going to bring back the car as a... It's like the telephone. It's like the iPhone. You know, I people, people consider the telephone or something like a commodity, you know, you bring it back with the application as an object of desire, it's something that you cannot stay without it. Anyone you know? interested in building apps for the next Renault cars? Yeah, we have, uh, I, I guess we'll have to work on, work on that. Um, tell me about the future, because you're changing, like this is gonna, I know people are buying real estate yeah. near the periphery, in noisy areas in cities, because they bet that the noise will go so low that the price is going to go up of all those buildings which are close to streets, like especially in Paris. How do you see the car in 2030? Give me, you know, like a little, some, some vision. How you know, I would invite will you... Will it drive by itself? Yeah. I would love that. Like, can I stop driving it myself? Look, look I, I get that. That means mean you have a lot of things that we have in the lab and you have a lot of things that we're going to send to the market. In the lab, we have plenty of things. That means a drive, a, a car which is... Uh, uh, driven, you don't even have to drive. I mean, you can sit in the passenger car and uh, as, as a passenger behind and let the car drive you. That means we have plenty of technology and electronics allowing you to do this. What you need to know is that the car has regulation on safety which are very strict, extremely strict. And the liabilities on cars are very high. You make a mistake, you're going to pay hundreds of millions of dollars mm. of penalty. So that's why a lot of the innovation we make in the lab will never go to the market because they are submitted to very strict regulation. This is one of the limitations. But, uh, but Tweezy, yeah. there is one right there. Yes. And uh, there is actually one to be won at the web. Yeah. But Thank you. <laughs> but you see, the Tweezy, the Tweezy, for example, it's a small car. It yeah. goes everywhere. You can park it. You can even drive it without having a driver license, and it's zero emission. Oh, it's no driving license? Uh, no, you can, you can, you can drive like a the bike? Tweezy without driving license. That means, you know, people at, I know in the United States you can drive at 16 years old, but in France you still have to wait for 18 or, or 17 uh, to be able to, to, so, but you can drive a Tweezy if you're 15 years old. You, some specific, with some specific con consideration, you can, you can do it. But um, the advantage of it, it's small, it's zero emission, but we have to be careful. We're going to build a lot of applications, but we're going to have to be careful always on the safety, on the safety side. Well, how about the, uh, the way to sell the car? That, that's going to completely change as well. And you're investing a huge amount. I know very, you're very active in digital in, in Renault. Th this, uh, is, this, is one, oh, this is another big revolution taking place for all marketers. Is, you know, we use, I mean, today, at the level of the lines between Renault and Nissan, we spend about $1.5 billion dollars in advertising and marketing, $1.5 billion. So most of it, it's still very conservative. You know, you put an ad on the TV, you buy a paper, uh, you, you buy a page on the newspaper, uh, you make an ad on the radio, etc. 1.5 billion, you said? Yes, yes. So we, and, we'll and take little, some of that. No, but what we're moving to the web. The, the, the problem, and, and today, we, about 15% of our advertising is on the web. You know what's the limitation? We don't find enough people competent I mean, we would like to hire more people, uh, specialists of 
uh, you know, social marketing, people who are, I mean, they, oh, are, you think it they are usually involved? very young people. They are usually very young people. Careful, you're, you're going to walk away with like a ton of CVs here. I don't think so, because CVs. I think you told me you have entrepreneurs here yeah. mainly. So they That's don't want to. Yeah, exactly. They would like to build application or build companies to deliver yes. this kind of services. But I'm, sa I'm saying here there is a revolution taking yeah. place in terms of social marketing, marketing. So you're building a big team. Yeah, and this is Renault Nissan, and you can add the other car manufacturer, you can add the other industry, everybody moving into this direction. We all feel that what we're doing today is a little bit disconnected compared to where the world is moving. And we need the people, we need the infrastructure, we need the processes, we need even to understand. We need even to understand, because it's moving very quickly, and the people making the decision, who are in their 40s and their 50s, have completely different mindset. Wow, I qualify by one year or... No, you, no but, we, but you see, you have a different <laughs> yes. mindset from, from your kids who is 16 years, 7 years old, who has a completely no, no, different... They don't want to friend us on Facebook, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we need to move fast, and we need people to help us move fast, and these people, we don't have enough of them. Great, you know? well, we'd love to help you. Um, we'd love to help you as much as we can, I'm sure, in the room as well. There is one thing which we've, you've done is you're one of the first on iAd in Europe, the iPhone advertising. So are you moving budget from the TV to, yes. to the, the mobile space? Yes. We are moving as much as we can to what we call the new forms of, of marketing. And we're hiring, again, a lot of people who are going to help us do this. Uh, we're doing it for Renault, we're doing it for Nissan. And frankly, we, we're always afraid that we moved about 15% of our budget in this direction. 50%? 15. 1.5%. One, one five, one five, uh, of 1.5 billion? Exactly. And we need to move much faster. We need to move much faster. That's not bad. That's a few hundred yeah. million. But, but you see, that means you, you can see that in terms of product, things are changing. In terms of expectation, things are changing. In, in terms of communication, in terms of marketing. And so little by little, we can see that the way we used to do business even five years down the road, uh, uh, you know, five years ago, it, it's going to be completely different from the way the company is going to be structured and the priority five can, years from now. Can I buy the cars online already? Yes. Directly from Renault? Yes, but usually people don't do it. I mean, some people do it, but usually people, why? Because, you know, 10 years ago, you go to a showroom, you have a salesman, you ask him questions, uh, he answer more or less right the, 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 the concerns you have. <laughs> I um, won't comment. No, 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 but it's, it's a fact. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, you, 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 you go visit another showroom and it took you two, three weeks uh, to make your decision. It's over. Now you shop on the web. You go on a site, you get the information, you go to the car manufacturer, you have all the specification of the car. You can turn it, look at it from up, down. You can ask questions, you get the answer. You shop at the dealer, you ask for the price. He's going to give you the service. You make your mind, but you don't buy. Then you go to the showroom because you want to see the object. Because nothing replaced yet to see the object, real size, sit down inside, comfort, smell, touch things, and then you make your mind and you go ahead for it. So but I would say a, a big part of the decision process now is made on the web, but you still go to the showroom because you want to feel the object. You know, so you send people to a dealership still? The car is not only a rational decision. It, it is also an emotional decision. And thanks God it is, it is this. Because if it was only a rational decision, we'll be in a commodity. Yeah. We don't want to be a commodity. Be, be, we, 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 that's why we need to beef up a little bit the emotional side of, of, of the car. That means the status, the brand, you know, the, the, the comfort. That means the family. Con that means it's, it's, a, it's a collective decision. You know, uh, uh, buying, buying a car is like choosing a dog. It's a big deal. You know, it's like choosing <laughs> a dog. It's, it's, that's what I'm saying. The car is not an object. It, it, is, it is more like a pet in the, in, in the family. People remember, they participate to it. It's an important decision. Um, you remember the first car you had, you remember the second car or that. How many people remember the refrigerator they had 20 years ago? Nobody. That yeah. means you, you remember the first car. You remember the first color. Why did yeah. you decide it? The experience you have it. So we need to beef up this, this emotional side of the car because we have absolutely, that means we have everything to lose for the car to become a commodity. How about uh, word of mouth? I don't know if, if, if you guys can put the Twitter wall for a minute um, to, to have a Twitter search on the web and see how people react just for a few minutes. But uh, I'm not sure I'm challenging them. This is not, uh, this, this is not planned at all. Now I'm, I'm playing. But you know this word of mouth, Carlos? We have people talking about Renault you know, every, I guess, you know, 10 seconds or every minute, or like, there is a lot of content on Twitter and on Facebook, all the social network. Do you, do you plan, you know, listening more to that, getting engaged, having 
your team, you, you said you, you were about to hire a lot of people. You, will, uh, you think it's important? It, it is very important. I can tell you, we are hiring people. We have, we're using, uh, you know, uh, all these new ways of communicating. We're hiring people toward that. I, I was even discussing this morning with the head of our communication who are complaining about the fact that he cannot find enough people to move into yep. the right direction. We're moving this direction, no, no doubt about it. Very good. Carlos, I want to really thank you very much. Do you have any, any closing remark on how we can work with you? Can we work with Renault on, uh, on this? And you know, if you see it on a long-term basis, you know, establish a relationship, what's the best way? Do I, can you give your cell phone to look, everybody? Look, look, first, I mean, I, I'm afraid if I give you a cell phone, this, I'm not the, the right person to contact if you want to do business with us, you know, because uh, uh, we have very competent people. What I want to tell you is, you know, Renault Nissan this year is going to be about 7 million cars. We're the third largest group. We want to challenge. We are challenging in terms of product and technology. We need a lot of creativity. We don't think we can do it alone. We think we have a great idea. We have a great technology. And we're going to need a lot of entrepreneurs to pull with us, obviously benefiting from it, contributing to it, in order to make, in this case, in this particular case, the electric car, a great product. You know, something that is really be reconciling the, 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 the industry which with its, uh, with its environment. And I can tell you that, I mean, if I, was, uh, if I was probably 30 years younger, I would be now sitting in your room. And building you know, things. Trying to, trying to contribute to this revolution taking place where we're going to have to change the way even objects are perceived from the, from the public. Well, we'll love to help you. Thank you so much, Carlos. Okay, this you. was a huge opportunity. Thank you so much. Merci.